here. It's so much fun. We've actually uh, got somebody on here that uh, we're going to bring on as a guest. His name is Eric. And, Eric, you're one of the guys involved with BitInstant.com. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, among other things. Now, I wanted to make sure that we didn't cover uh, the same ground tonight as we did last night because we had Roger on who's also involved with uh, BitInstant. And BitInstant, obviously, I think is a, is a pretty big deal because it makes it easy for people to get their hands on Bitcoin. But that's not the only thing that you've got your, uh, I guess, that you're involved in when it comes to Bitcoin. Uh, what was it that you wanted to share with us tonight? Uh, yeah, well, there's a couple things. Um, first, I wanted to share what we uh, what we did last week. We were in Vienna. Uh, a few of us were flown out to Vienna to see uh, a new device that is being created for Bitcoin specifically. Uh, it's a little a little tiny card that will fit in your wallet, and it has a screen, and you can basically use it to send Bitcoins or receive them with others in your area uh, using a mesh network. So. It what is a mesh network? Yeah, so a mesh network is just a network that creates itself spontaneously with other devices in the area. So, so you don't need to have internet. an internet connection for a mesh right. network. Right. So it's a little Bitcoin screen that looks like a, you know, the size of a credit card that allows you to uh, send Bitcoins to other people without the internet, without an internet connection. Yes, and it also doesn't require a power connection because it is uh, completely solar powered and you can also bend it. Unbelievable. To... Well, if you put it in your wallet, I mean, m- not much sunlight gets in my wallet. Uh, yeah. It, what do you do? Put wear it on your hat? It gets power from a number of ways. Every time you push the buttons, it gets power when you can bend so it's it. It's like orange perpetual. Forth. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is uh, like space age. That sounds it's, really fantastic. Does it exist? Did you see one you of these know, things? We, we saw it. We played around with it. It's technology that's being built by uh, these guys over in over in Europe, and it's not really available on the normal market. So most people would have, would have no idea that this stuff exists. How wow. long until it's uh, available? Uh, they'll start producing probably in January. So and, exciting. Now, yeah. I was watching, there's a video that uh, you suggested that I go watch, and even though the internet here is just dreadfully slow, I was able to stream most of the four-plus-minute video uh, prior to the beginning of the show. I haven't seen the entire thing yet at this point, because, uh, again, limitations on internet connections up here in Rogers Campground. But uh, this card, the video makes it look like it does a whole lot more than just transfer Bitcoin. Yeah, like the, you the can send te- messages and things like that. The technology allows for all sorts of things. Uh, they, they've been building this card for about five years, which is longer than Bitcoin has existed. Mm-hmm. So it was built with other features before Bitcoin. And then when Bitcoin came out, they were like, wow, this is exactly perfect for our card. So they've retooled it to be Bitcoin specific, and it all can also do some other fun stuff. So in case we're just, you know, in, yeah. in the danger of tr- treading over um, stuff that you might have talked about. what Bitcoin is briefly. Yeah, so Bitcoin is this what? Internet currency. Um, it is non-tangible, but allows you to send and receive money. It's completely unhackable. Um, it is not inflatable. So unlike other government currencies where, you know, governments claim to be so competent at controlling the marketplace, but they keep on crashing it into the ground over and over again um, in, in in collusion with the banks, Bitcoin disallows that kind of thing. Um, so, and it's not government related in any way, shape, or form. Right. So, I mean, if you know, what, whatever whatever realms that people believe the government should be involved in, very few people believe the government should be involved in manipulating currency markets, and especially. I think for most the, people believe that the favor of their friends. Been that way. I think most people believe that gov- you know governments have to print money because that's the way it's always been. But apparently, people don't know what gold is. Bitcoin, I think, is is going to help change that perception because it really puts money back in the hands of the people. Right. And it shows that money can work without government. And it's not just Absolutely. a theory, but it's actually working right now. Well, right. Not I can't imagine anybody doesn't think that money can work without government. Really? I mean, there's people, there's mouth-breeding people out there. Some people think that... you can't have the trash picked up without government. I, I mean, the 5,000 years of gold um, out there, and people think that governments need to be involved in money? Well, people think that gold screwed up the money, so they, they say that that's why the government Right. I heard one in. person one time say, Don't, doesn't gold cause inflation? How can gold cause inflation? Inflation means it. printing money. You cannot print gold. But that's just it. They, these people, they don't understand inflation. I mean, when you go to a government economics class in government high school, which I slept through most of mine, but when you are there and awake, they will tell you that inflation is a rise in prices. So, I mean, people just don't even understand from the beginning. Yep. If you don't know what but, the words are that you're saying, then you're not Communicating. If you look at silver or, you know, choosing another precious metal, compare it to gas prices three or four decades ago, then compare them today, you'll see that gas prices sure. are constant, You're You're relatively correct. constant compared to precious metals over that time period. So this is a willful um, ignorance when it comes to real money. Well, I don't think most people pay attention to the price of silver, and they certainly don't know what the historical price well, of silver is. Well, they've heard me is. now. No, I, I mean, I, I majored in economics in college. Um, I took classes called the History of Economic Thought. Not a single time during my tenure there did, did we ever even mention the term Austrian economics. Yeah. It was, I was 
I didn't even hear that word until I got out of college. So there you go. I mean, somebody who actually went through an economics education completely in the dark about these things. The average person, they don't know this stuff. So it's important to talk about it. I'm glad that we've uh, you know, given a baseline. Bitcoin is something new. It's exciting. It's completely disconnected from governments. But let's get back into this Bitcoin card. Uh, the website, by the way, is bitcoincard.org. You guys are in talks. You and I guess the Bit Instant guys are yeah. in talks with this like oil, Russian oil magnate or something. Yeah, a few of us were invited to fly out there uh, to check it out because we're very involved with the community, and he wanted basically to get our feedback, and mm-hmm. he wanted us to go back to the community and tell them about this thing that he was building. So um, we went out there with there were about half a dozen of us, and we met this guy uh, and got to check out this card firsthand. So he's basically just some wealthy Russian oil dude who's got a bunch of money that he wants to throw into Bitcoin to help yeah. this make make this happen. Yeah, he's a he's a serial entrepreneur from uh, Siberia. Uh, he extremely interesting person, and uh, like many of us, when he discovered Bitcoin, he just went crazy for it, and so he's using his resources to start helping to build the infrastructure around it. Because people who have a real understanding of economics, real economics, uh, can see that there's a lot of potential in Bitcoin, and it's understandable why people would go crazy for it. So we can talk more about that here in a moment. Uh, the Bitcoin card, it's, it sounds fascinating, and I want to know more about this mesh network and how you know this can work without the Internet. That, that's confusing to me. 855-450-FREE. So we're here with our special guest, though, to start things out tonight, uh, to talk about some really just futuristic and exciting uh, developments that are surrounding Bitcoin, which, of course, is a distributed online currency that has uh, nothing to do. It's it's peer-to-peer. It doesn't have any uh, central storehouses or central manufacturing locations or centralized anything. The whole thing's completely decentralized, and there are a lot of neat things that you can do with Bitcoin already. Uh, but one of the, the exciting things we were talking about earlier this week about Bitcoin is that, you know, you, there's no licensing fee. There's no corporation behind this. Nobody is claiming an intellectual property rights uh, claim on Bitcoin. So if you want to go and create something that is involving Bitcoins, you just do it. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. And thus, innovation is happening at an incredible rate. Yeah. Since you don't have to go through the court systems or ask for business licenses or do all these things that governments put in your way, Things are happening at incredible speed. Bitcoin was this novelty on the Internet a year ago, and today you can buy, sell, and trade and pr- live your life with Bitcoins. You can buy food here at the Porcupine Freedom Festival with Bitcoins. And more vendors, I think Roger told us uh, from BitInstant.com last night, that something like 80% of vendors here are accepting Bitcoins, which is incredible. Uh, so, Eric, you're here from BitInstant.com, and you were talking about the Bitcoin card, which folks can go and kind of get a preview of at BitcoinCard.org. Uh, I've been watching the video here during the breaks, and it just seems like this amazing technology that we'd see in some sort of future space travel like sci-fi show. But you're saying this thing is here. It's uh, a flexible card that's solar powered that can actually be used as essentially to transfer bitcoins back and forth, even send text messages uh, to people. And it, uh, the more users there are of it, the more effective it is, right? Yeah, it, it makes a mesh network with all the other devices in in the area. So. Which is independent Um, from the Internet. Right. It doesn't require the Internet to work with the mesh network. And then if anyone is on the Internet also connected to this mesh network, then it will broadcast transactions out to their larger Internet. So this this card can hook up to the Internet as well. Yeah. You'd have what are called like a dongle node, which is Mm -hmm. somewhere in the vicinity that would also connect to the Internet. But that's not required. So the mesh network can just work by itself. And then any connection that you would need to the outside world can be done very easily also. So exciting. So what else do you, I mean, is there something relevant that we should talk about about this card? Because obviously I'm totally new to it. So, like, what, How, what's this going to change? Um, well, it's cool in the, uh, I know a lot of listeners are into, like, um, you know, disaster preparedness. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that can work. You know, people say Bitcoin, you know, maybe that's interesting, but if the Internet goes down, everyone's screwed. Yeah. Um, this is technology showing that even with without government infrastructure, even if the entire Internet went down, uh, even if the electric grid failed, uh, this kind of thing, which is still high tech, can operate without any of that infrastructure. So how does it work? Because in Bitcoin, you have to these these blockchains, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I guess it's information. Um, so this information has to propagate through the other Bitcoin people to get stuff, verified. To get verified. Right? How does it do it on the cards? How does it uh, this information fly around? Does it just go more slowly? Do these cards have to reach all around the world um, in this way, or, or do they have to? get to an internet connection? Does some card somewhere have to get to an internet connection? Uh, Only if you're trying to send money to someone uh, beyond the mesh network. So say everyone here at Porkfest had had these cards and there was no internet, you know, as if that's a hypothetical here. Uh, Say everyone here had one of those cards. Um, Everyone can be sending money back and forth from their cards without access to the internet. 
But when your card gets close to the internet, it says hi, and then it says yeah, and the then and then you know checks out what else other people are doing else. So That's if exciting. we were um, in the middle of the woods, you and I, and we both had the cards, we could do business right there, mm-hmm. and then it would fly up to the internet. Yep, as as soon as one of us was on the internet. Now these cards are interesting, but can't you just do this with your smartphone already? I have a program called what Bit Spinner or something like that. Yeah, that and requires cell service, I so see. you're relying on that infrastructure, and gotcha. cell phones often always run out of power. This so. is something you can literally just keep in a in a wallet, and you said it's solar powered. You can also power it by pressing on it. Essentially. Yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing. I mean, you can just bend it back and forth, and it'll charge and it. Charge it. Yeah, and it's not like you have to sit there for ten minutes. It's just in, in average cost? use. What what is it going to cost? I mean, they, they they would retail for about ten to twenty five dollars somewhere in that range. So cheap. Yeah, and, I mean, it's, so and it's going to do more than just be a Bitcoin wallet, right? Like you'll be able to can. send messages or something it, like that. It as can. According yeah. To this video. Yeah, it can do other stuff, but the reason we're interested in it is primarily for its financial implications. Sure, sure, but the more yeah. useful it is, I mean, the more likely somebody's yeah. going to pick this thing up. Yeah, but I mean, um, you know, phones can do text messages already. Sure, but if but this mesh network thing's yeah. going on, then I don't have to use my phone signal to send a text message. I can that could be useful for activism to, yeah. you know, have activists in an area be able and to. And it can't be shut down by the government. Think yeah. about the uh, the revolutions in Egypt and those places. This is incredible. They were shutting down those. They were shutting down the internet entirely. Yeah. I'd like to keep our listeners up to date on the Bitcoin card, and so uh, keep please let us know. And by the way, thanks for uh, for stopping in tonight. Bitcoin. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you can go more to learn uh, to get go there to get your Bitcoin. All right, so we're here at Porkfest 2012, and we've got Eric with us from BitInstant.com, uh, also involved in a number of other Bitcoin-related projects. Actually, asked you to stay on a little extra, a uh, little extra here tonight, Eric, because I think Jerry in Portsmouth, Virginia, may have a question regarding Bitcoin. And you know, Mark and I know a thing or two about it, but clearly, you know way more than us. So, Jerry, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Mark, and Eric. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, what's on your mind? Um, oh, uh, just just twofold, uh, and, I, and I'll let you go. Um, uh, uh, concerning the bitcoins, is there any appearance of them in the Commonwealth of Virginia at all? And if so, uh, where would a person go to at least look at one or see what the exchange is or anything about it? Well, we did a bad job of uh, ex- explaining what Bitcoins were, I'll tell you, because uh, Bitcoins are all around the world. Yeah, Bitcoin is a global system, uh, not constrained to any any national territory or anything. So, What was the map? Mark told me about a map that you can look at where like, the Bitcoins uh, transactions actually just pop up all yeah. over the world. Yeah, online you can see a transaction, you, a globe that basically spins around and shows you every transaction as it happens in real time. But well, Bitcoins you know the, are basically... You know the website? I'm sorry. Yeah, you know the it's website? blockchain.info. Okay. And there's a, a number it's of... It's too big for you to, to you do here, Ian. Um, so basically, Bitcoins exist wherever the Internet exists. And you can go and get them by going to, say, bitinstant.com. They have more than 700,000 locations in uh, the United States, Brazil and Russia, um, CVS, uh, 7-Elevens, Walmarts, major banks, where you can deposit cash and then get Bitcoins. I'm sorry. Can you give that, that dot .com again? Yeah, bit instant, B I T, instant, one word, dot com. Okay. And so there was this, what I was talking about, there was this actual map. Are you saying that at blockchain.info you can yeah. see a map? Yeah, you have to scroll down and find one of the links over there. I see, because there was another site that you just typed in the actual uh, URL and it took you right to a map. But there are there are maps online where they, they show you, because the Bitcoin network is completely open. You can go and you can examine, you know, all the different transactions that are going on. It's completely transparent in that way. Of course, it can also be used anonymously, so while it's transparent, the, there is the possibility for anonymity. Uh, but, so at any time, you can register where all these transactions are happening, and they literally are popping up everywhere. So I imagine a number of people are in Virginia that are supporting Bitcoin and are on the, the, the network and all of that. Yep, and if they don't wish to be known that they're in Virginia, then you'll never know about it. But some of them don't mind uh, you know, connecting Bitcoin with their real-world identity. And uh, they're all over the U.S. You and know. You, you can look at a Bitcoin, sort of. There's uh, a physical Bitcoin out there, uh, Cascasius or something like that. Yeah, none of, none of us know how to pronounce the word. Uh, and, but there's also Bitcoin cards that people have mm-hmm. made, which have Bitcoin addresses on them or in them. And uh, and so, you know, there are physical representations of Bitcoin, but ultimately, Bitcoins exist only online for real. Yeah, just like all the money that you're using, right? When you log into your online bank account, you're seeing digital money there. It's no different than that, except that uh, whereas dollars can just be printed at whim, bitcoins cannot. So, you know, you tell me which one's virtual. Okay, so, Jerry, does that answer your question? Uh, also listening out in Virginia, Bill, uh, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Mark, and Eric. Hello there. Yes, I've got a question about the bitcoin. Yes, sir. It, y'all say that y'all can send messages. Like, if I want to send a message to you, that it could not be, like, um, 
it's not the same as on the internet, correct? Therefore, it can't be hacked or anything like that, or nobody else can see it. Unless not, is that correct? Now, Bill, you're talking about the Bitcoin card, which is in development uh, regarding its message sending capability. Uh, Eric, uh, what do you think? Is that? Yeah, I mean, the message thing is sort of an auxiliary function, but Bitcoins themselves are transmitted anonymously between people. But if but two people have these car- but if two people have these cards and there's no internet connection around, then their messages can be sent uh, completely. Is it secure? Correct. Is it secure when there's when that stuff's sent? Uh, anyone on that mesh network can probably read it. Interesting. But since okay. it's not connected to the internet, the other rest of the world cannot. Got it. Yeah, Bill's well, that answer your question? Are you still there? Yep. Go right ahead. No, we'd have to let say, for example, the military decides to adopt something like that. It says, "Hey, we're just going to have the the uh, mesh network." For the military, they, that way they could send messages back and forth, like in battle zones, something like that, the war zones. I'm sure they've already thought of that and have many mesh networks deployed around the world. It's not a new concept. Okay, Very good, Bill. Thank you for the call tonight. appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. That's the SACL CAI toll-free line. The difference you know, is that their mesh networks t- cost 100 times uh, yeah. to implement what, <laughs> what one does in the free market. Yeah, and these cards are amazing, and they're you know the size of a credit card, basically. They're going to cost 10 20 bucks, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Eric, uh, again, once again, that's Bitcoin, excuse me, bitcoincard.org? Bitcoincard.org. Yep. Now, uh, all right, so while we still got you here, talk about something else that's relating to Bitcoin, some other interesting development. How about gambling? Uh, what about, uh, you know, in what way is uh, Bitcoin allowing people to have more freedom regarding gambling these days? Right, okay, so since Bitcoin allows anyone anywhere to send money instantly to anyone else, uh, obviously that allows people to get around gambling payment restrictions. So, Which the U.S. government has forced upon right. payment providers. Because we're a free country, we do not allow many things. And yeah. <laughs> one of those is to wager your own money on things that you wish to play. Well, no, 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 no. You can go to an Indian casino or Vegas or Atlantic City or you know some government-approved casino, and right. you can blow your money there all you want. But you can't do it online with vendors or processors, card processors and banks that are based out of the United States. Right. right. The, the payment processors get in trouble, so they do not allow it. And thus, you, you can't play all sorts of gambling games online because the payment processors won't deal with it. Bitcoin is not a company and just does whatever you tell it to do. So if you if you say send money to this website, uh, the money will go and no one can stop it. So nobody can put pressure on Bitcoin. There's no political pressure that can come down on the CEO because there is no CEO because Bitcoin no CEO. is no, there's no corporation. Right. right. And and compare it to something like eGold where everyone was very excited because uh, it's gold, and it was a digital way so people could transact money. But They went uh, after those guys. They went after them because it was a company, and they could do the same with any any sort of gold depository that gives you uh, electronic accounts. So that's why you know gold, no matter how digitized it can be, can never be as interesting or effective as Bitcoin because uh, there would have to be a central party uh, involved in that, whereas with Bitcoin there's none. I think that uh, silver and gold, have a, they still have a, val- a valuable place in the alternative money uh, world. Yep. Uh, and that is that if you are doing person-to-person transactions, gold and silver make that pretty easy. But for a transaction with anybody anywhere else, I mean, Bitcoin's the way to go. And now we're seeing that with these new cards, Bitcoin's going to be the way to go even for person-to-person. So it's, getting, right. even, it's getting even easier as there's more development on the Bitcoin.